What's up? I'm travel photographer Brendan Vanson of brendansadventures.com and I'm here in Brasilia, Brazil. Brasilia, Brazil. I'm in Brasilia, Brazil. That's correct. It sounds weird, but it's correct and I'm here. Let's go shoot something. So I arrived in uh, Brasilia maybe five minutes ago and I've already made a, a massive mess of, of the, the hotel room. My flight was delayed, so I really don't have as much time as I thought I was going to have here. Um, so I still have time probably to shoot two things, two sunsets, maybe a sunrise if I'm likely, if I'm lucky, but probably just two sunsets, um, two blue hours. So um, I'm at a hotel that's about two blocks from this TV tower, and I'm going to go shoot the TV tower. My setup for the shoot is going to be um, a, set, a 16 to 35 millimeter f4 IS lens and uh, on the Canon 6D and I'm also going to shoot some graduated filters because it's a big flat open city there's some fountains and roads below and hopefully if the if the TV tower is open I can go way up to the top and photograph that skyline and that view down in the valley so hopefully it's cool um, I've never seen photos taken from up there so I'm not even pot sure if it's possible to shoot this um, at sunset but we're gonna go there and try right now and then uh, tomorrow if I have time I'm, I'm in the middle of a giant project right now so I probably don't if I have time I'll, I'll explore town in the day and if not there's this really cool museum here that I really want to photograph the outside of so I'll do that tomorrow but l right now let's let's go to the TV tower and see if we can shoot that let's go So the sun's already coming down here on, on day two, so I'm going to go out shooting again. I really wanted to actually shoot the TV tower. I was shooting opposite the TV tower last night, but I think shooting into the sunset at the base of the TV tower with some heavy sunset light behind it might look cool. So I feel like kind of I'm stuck on one subject here in Brasilia. Um, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then if I have time, I'm gonna try to run, and literally, I mean run, sprint to the, the National Museum because the National Museum is like a spaceship looking mother building. It's awesome looking. And really, it's the reason I came here. So I feel like maybe I'm making a bit of a mistake trying to get this TV tower shot, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, let's go shoot the TV tower and then let's race down and try to get the National Museum as well. So I actually got pretty fantastic light for the most part um, yesterday evening. I, I got the shot that I wanted of the TV tower, which is cool. And then I was running, like literally running the kilometer, maybe two kilometers to get to the National Museum. Probably should have just taken a taxi. But I did get there right at the perfect light, right at the start of the blue hour, which is exactly what I wanted. I got a couple really cool photos there. It was probably a harder location to shoot than I expected, um, judging based on the photos I saw. Um, but anytime you're just arriving somewhere and shooting something without really scouting it, it's hard. Um, but I think I did get a couple cool shots. Um, since really I didn't film that much out in the field on this episode, and I feel like I'm selling you guys short a little bit, I think what I'm gonna do right now is actually take you into the digital dark room and show you my three or four favorite photos and then talk about how I shot them uh, here in Brasilia. But first, I've got a plane to catch. I'm going to Rio de Janeiro right now. Um, so once I get somewhere with a computer and I can talk to you guys, I'll show you guys uh, the process of, of these photos. 
What's up, peeps? I am in the digital darkroom, aka my hotel room here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And as I promised you, I'm going to run you through some of these images. Before I do, I need to apologize quickly that the audio quality is probably not that good right now. Um, there's traffic outside as well, which doesn't help. Sirens, honking horns. So if you hear that stuff in the background, I'm sorry. I really need to get a new mic for this computer. Um, anyways, let's jump into these images. Let's talk first about the very first place I went, which was the top of the TV tower in Brasilia. Um, and you can see it's a beautiful scene. Really cool. I wish these fountains were going off, but you can't really control things like that. And uh, yeah, so really cool scene. But in this image, I realized that I was missing the light trails um, really from the foreground here. I wanted it to be extra dramatic. I wanted it to be really, really powerful. I wanted to show the red trails and the yellow headlights and everything like that. So how I did that and how I fought that is I shot a super long exposure. So this is now 71 seconds at f16. So I'm shooting that on bulb mode and I'm figuring out figuring out the exposure. Um, basically, not so, not so much by trial and error, but figuring out what the ISO would be. Um, for a 30 second exposure and then manipulating the shutter speed to match 100 ISO after that. So I came to the conclusion that it was a 200, um, an ISO 200 image at 30 seconds. And then anytime you take the ISO and, and split it in half, you need to double the shutter speed. So I doubled that from 30 seconds to 60 seconds. The light dropped really quick at that point. So I guessed I'd need about another 10 seconds of exposure and I was dead on. So um, it's not trial and error. It's more like an educated guess. Um, yeah, so it came out really well. As you can see, there's really, really dramatic light trails through here on all the roads and overpasses and everything like that. And it came out really well, and I'm so stoked about how it came out. Ideally, I would like bigger skies. I would like more clouds, more dramatic clouds up here. And on a long exposure like that, you'd be able to get these nice wispy clouds up here. So I threw on a two-stop ND filter for this image just to get me that extra amount of light and I'm really happy with how it came out. On the second day I ran back I think there was just an accident outside. <laughs> on the second day I ran back to the TV tower for sunset because I wanted to capture the TV tower into the sunset because the night before the light was terrible as you saw or not terrible not great this direction but behind me in the sunset it was brilliant and the same thing happened on the second day when I went out and shot you got really cool dramatic skies in the background and you've got the sunset starring underneath the TV tower which is cool uh, I realized I wanted more of the TV tower or all of the TV tower so I started backing up and came up with something like this now this is the TV tower obviously when you're photographing it you're or photographing from it you're right here um, but yeah, I'm shooting straight into the sunset and an image like this just is not possible shot straight into a sunset unless you use filters or you're willing to go HDR and I'm not a fan of HDR so I went with a filter. Um, to get this image I used the format high tech uh, filter which is this one's a four stop which means that at the top of it it's four stops darker than the bottom. And shooting straight into the sunset like this, this was absolutely perfect. This is a soft grad. So you really don't see a heavy line in the image anywhere because it is just a soft, gradual change from dark to light. Now, a lot of times these four stop filters are too much. They increase the dramatic uh, dynamic range just too much. It makes it look a little bit fake. But in this situation, it absolutely worked. So you need filters. If you want to capture amazing images, you need filters. I think filters, I'll let that airplane go over. Sorry about that. Again, into the filters. When I started using filters properly, this is when my game changed. I started throwing filters onto the front of my lenses, and my game went from good photographer to great or better photographer. So if you really are serious about landscape, nature, urban, architectural photography, you need to throw some um, some filters into your bag. At least get some ND filters. Definitely get some graduated ND filters like this one from Format High Tech. Uh, if you're interested in this lens in particular, I've, I'll throw a link into the description of the video. I've got this four stop. I've also got a two stop 
and a three stop and they're fantastic. I use grad filters more than any other filter on my camera. Um, so yeah, and then from there I literally sprinted. I was running through the streets of Brasilia with my shoulder bag on, looking like a psycho that just robbed somebody of their shoulder bag. And to get to um, the museum, the National Museum before the blue hour hit, and I got there right as it did hit. You can see the sky is dramatic. It's just a really cool destination to shoot. And this was my favorite image, actually, my favorite composition. So I really need to go back and shoot this again in slightly better light. In photography, we're constantly talking about getting an anchor into your images, getting something to focus the eye on and then lead people into the image. And so all this cracked cement works as that anchor. And you just look down at this and you go, oh, cool, cracked cement. And then it leads you along these lines into the building and that's your, your focus now. So it's a fantastic setup and something that's important in photography is reviewing your images and realizing what works, what doesn't work, and what you need to do next time. So I really love this line and I use it a couple other times in different ways. That's me sitting there. Um, but when I go back, I need to shoot again a little bit later in the evening to capture this look like this. Um, let's go on to another one of my images I really like, another super long exposure. And this was my last photo of the day. There's a cop car here, and they literally just pulled in here. And I was like, that would be a really cool image. So I ran up to them, asked them if they're going to be staying there for a while. They were eating their dinner, and I, they said, yeah, we're going to be here for five or six minutes. I said, can you stay and then let me know when you're leaving because I want to take a long exposure photo. And they were super, super cool about about um, letting me do that. So they, I took about four photos of them that were all really long exposures. This was my favorite one, and this was taken at ISO 50 because I wanted a really long exposure, and at 230 seconds. So you can see the clouds are all wispy and crazy and dramatic. It's almost um, non-earthly, outer-worldly, um, the way the clouds are, and that's an effect created by the really, really long exposure. And that's the reason I went for that super long exposure. The reason I went F16 was not only to get this exposure really long, but so I could star this light that was right on the edge here. On a previous image, I messed up, messed up, and I put the light a little bit too much um, in the frame, and it just turns to a blob. But then on this one, I corrected it, and you get that starred sun or starred light. So um, re in reality, I think I got some cool photos in Brasilia, considering I only had two days. I did some black and white stuff. Um, which is something I don't do a lot of that came out, I think, really cool. And I think there's a lot of images considering I was only shooting for a total of like an hour, maybe an hour and a half between two days. So I'm really stoked about the way came, things came out. And I'm really excited to get back to Brasilia again. I'll be back there in a month or so. Um, the current schedule was set that I was going to be in Rio de Janeiro and I was just there. And then Sao Paulo. But from a video standpoint, that's not going to happen. I only had two days in Rio, and it absolutely poured rain on me the entire time, like heaving buckets of rain the entire time. So it was pretty rough, and I didn't shoot anything. Here in Sao Paulo, I only have one day, and I'm covered with business meetings this whole afternoon, so I won't be able to shoot anything here. But that's okay because I'm coming back to Brazil. Um, the schedule for the show for the next couple months is crazy. It's insane. You guys are going to be like – you're going to be busy watching my pretty face on this channel for a couple months because I'm busy as a mother photographer over the next couple months. Tomorrow I'm flying to Sao Paulo. No, tomorrow I'm flying from Sao Paulo to La Paz. And then I'm going to be in La Paz, the Uni Salt Flats, um, Salta, San Pedro de Atacama, Mendoza, um, Buenos Aires, Florianopolis, Ila Grande. Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Brasilia, and then into the Amazon where I'm going to be swinging life away in a hammock boat for a week or two, climbing the Amazon from um, Santa Rem, Man uh, Manaus, all the way to Leticia, the Colombian border of the Amazon. So that's all going to happen 
in July and August. So two months of crazy adventure and crazy travel. And I'm sure there's going to be some really cool um, adventure videos from that stuff and some cool photography as well coming from those locations. So I hope you stay tuned and I hope you stay, stay subscribed to the channel for those bits of adventures. The next video that's coming is I'm going to show you guys how to do uh, – cool cityscapes using a long telephoto lens rather than a wide angle lens. So we're going to do that in La Paz. Hopefully we get good light for that. I'm off to La Paz tomorrow. So I'll catch you guys from the other side and yeah, we'll talk soon. Peace.